Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can use a simple PNG image to create a patterned background in your Squarespace website. We're going to create a unique pattern for an individual page section as well as the entire page and an entire blog post too. Now all the codes I'm about to share are listed below, but let's go ahead and hop into Squarespace so I can show you step by super simple step how to install this on your own website to make it look amazing. Ready to get started? Let's do it. So here we are in my Squarespace site and we're gonna start off with changing a page section, then an entire page, and then we'll hop into a blog post. So these are the three steps that we're gonna take. We need to upload the image to our site, then we'll add the URL for that image to the custom code, and then we'll adjust the code so it looks perfect to create the pattern. Now, all of these codes are listed in the description below, but I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to design and then custom CSS. This is where we're gonna make that magic happen. Now, at the very bottom of your CSS panel, you're gonna see a button that says manage custom files. When you click on that button, you'll be able to upload an image to your site. So it'll be hosted on the Squarespace server. This is where we'll place the image that we're using for the pattern. I'm just gonna drag mine over here and drop it. And there we go. I thought a Squarespace logo would be pretty appropriate for this tutorial. Now let's go ahead and grab this code right here and I'm gonna paste it and we're gonna make some changes. Immediately, you'll notice the background color went away from that section. It says background color transparent and that's where it went. Now the first part of this code actually says page and then page section, section background. Because footer sections in version 7.1 can have page sections, I wanted to make sure we're isolating this just to the page content, not the footer. So that's why I've added that code there. Now after that, it says page section, section background, because that's what we're changing. That's why the blue color just went away. So I'm gonna remove that filler text that says image URL here. I'm gonna click manage custom files and click on the image we just uploaded. And immediately my image is right here in the background. Now after that, we can change the size. That's the next line here. We can set a horizontal and a vertical width. If I set it to 50 PX, because my image is a square, it's just going to repeat it as many times as it can fit 50 into that background. Let's take a look at the mobile site really quick. So you can see, again, it's gonna be the same size, 50 PX into that background there as well. Now, as great as this is, it's doing it to every single page section on my site, which is not what I wanted. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this Chrome extent that I use. I've linked to it in the description below, not affiliated, just a fan. I'm gonna grab the data section ID for the only section we want this pattern in. And at the very top of this here where it says page, page section, I'm gonna replace that with the data section ID. I want to leave section background. I just replaced hashtag page dot page section. So now every other section has returned to normal. The only section we're changing is this specific one right here. Now let's talk about adding this to the entire page. This code is a little more complicated, so let's remove the code we have. I'm gonna copy this right here and paste it, and I'll walk you through how this works. We're gonna do the same process in the beginning here, where we'll remove the text that says image URL here. We'll click Manage Custom Files and place our image right there. And then after that, we're gonna set the background size. Because it's a square, I only have to type one value, but you can type a different value for horizontal and vertical. I'm gonna go ahead and type 100 PX. There we go. Now this next part is important. I said page section background color transparent. Let's scroll up here so we can see if we remove this, we're going to be getting that solid color on top of everything. That's not what we want. We want that to be transparent. Now after that, I said section background opacity 0.9. Your section background is different than the background color of your page section. So here I've changed the opacity to 0.9. I want you to see what happens to this overlay when I change this opacity value. If I make this 0.25, you can really see that image behind it. It's barely adding a background color. I can say 0.5 to make it 50% transparent, or I can say 0.9 to make it only 10% transparent. We're getting 90% of the color coming through. So adjust this opacity value to change the transparency of the section background color. Now down here, I have these inset sections, and that's why we're seeing the section background color being less transparent than the edges of it here. Page section background color set to transparent is what's removing that border for an inset page section. So one last time, adjust this opacity if you wanna change how transparent this background color is. We'll take a look at 0.75, we'll take a look at 0.5, and then again 0.9, 
definitely play around with those. So that's why this code is a little bit longer, but it follows the same steps. We just replace image URL here. We change the size if you want to. You don't have to add that, but if you want to adjust the size manually, that's how you do it. Then we set the page section background color to transparent and the actual section background opacity, we adjust to change the overlay color that shows up on top of that pattern. Now let's talk about an individual blog post. I'm gonna remove all of this code. We'll select save and let's navigate to a blog post in my pages menu. I'll select pages and we'll open up the sample blog that I have and let's go ahead and just hop into post one. There we go. Now I'm going to navigate back to my design menu and I'll select custom CSS. And just like the code we were using before, we're gonna say background color transparent, background image, and update the image URL here, and then set the background size. But instead of page, we're applying this to article. This is a blog article. That's the selector that we're gonna to use to isolate just the blog. So let's scroll down here and select manage custom files. And we'll click on our icon again, or the logo that we've uploaded for our background pattern. And let's go ahead and make this 75 PX this time. There we go. Now we've got a little bit of a pattern. So just like the page section, if you want an overlay here in your blog post, we've got some code for that too. And I will include this in the description below. I'm just gonna paste a new line over here that says, hey, take the inner wrapper of that blog post and let's give it a slightly opaque white background here and a little bit of padding. That way the content of your blog can stand out from your pattern just a little bit more. So again, we use almost the exact same code, but we just said take an article, a blog article, make that background color transparent, give it an image, change that background size. Again, mine is a square, so one value there is perfect. And then after that, I said blog item inner wrapper. Let's give that a slightly opaque background and a little bit of padding, which pulls in the text from the edges of that background. So there you go, a pattern background for a blog post. Alrighty, that's it for this tutorial. I've outlined the steps and put the code in the description below. Just make sure you grab the right one for the type of page section or page that you're trying to create this pattern background on. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give me a like and a comment and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new Squarespace tutorial every single week and I wanna make sure you catch the latest. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you're gonna love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I put all of my custom codes and pro tips inside one gigantic PDF available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.